So in this video, we're going to talk about how do we draw the lowest structure of H3PO4, right? Phosphoric acid, um, if you're working in a lab, one of the most common acids uh, that you may see, uh, that you may use in chemical reactions, right? Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is write out the amount of atoms of each atom I have. In this case, I have three hydrogen, one phosphorus, and I have four oxygens. And the idea is I want to be able to calculate the total number of valence electrons that I have in a problem. So in this case, from the periodic table, we should be very familiar with this. We get six valence electrons from oxygen. From phosphorus, we actually get five valence electrons. And with hydrogen, we should know this by now, we get one valence electrons, right? So the only thing I'm doing is essentially adding up the amount of total, the total number of valence electrons so I could I'll check myself in the end to make sure that I'm correct, right? So we know four times six, right? Because we have four oxygens each worth in six electrons apiece. I have four times six, so this is essentially 24 electrons plus my five, so that will give me 29 plus the three that I have, right? Because remember, I have one valence left, right? So I'm sorry, this should be a plus, right? So I have three hydrogens, each worth in one apiece. So this is essentially three times one, which is three, right? So essentially I have 29 uh, plus three, and that should give me a total of 32 electrons that I have to place. Now, from previous videos, uh, you, you could you could recall me saying that usually the atom that's furthest to the left is your central atom, but it, it, it doesn't work like that way when we're dealing with hydrogens, right? And, and you should mark this in your in your in your book. Hydrogen, when you draw in lower structures, hydrogen will never be your central atom. It just doesn't happen. It can only form one bond, right? Because it has one valence electron, right? So in this case, uh, the next option would be the phosphorus. So let's go ahead and put our phosphorus as a central atom. Right now, at this point, I have four oxygens around my phosphorus, so I'm just going to put four oxygens around my phosphorus at this point. Right? Uh, the reason why I go ahead and, and put my four oxygens around the phosphorus is that hydrogen can only form one bond, so if anything, it'll probably most likely be a branch. Of, of, of one of these oxygens, right? Um, it wouldn't be intuitive to put the phosphorus bonded to a hydrogen uh, because you still have four more oxygens to place, right? So, so that's, the, that's, the, that's the analysis of, reason why, of the reason why I went this path first. Now at this point, I always start from single bond because it's the least amount of electrons that I could put between two atoms, right? I don't want to start off as a double bond. I don't want to start off as a triple bond. I want to start off as a single bond. So essentially, I have one valence electrons from the phosphorus contributing, and I have one valence electrons from the oxygen contributing. So if I form a single bond here, that is what I'm saying, right? I have one electron from the phosphorus and one electron from the oxygen. And at this point, I'm actually going to go ahead and go around and form all single bonds. Now, in this case, I have two, four, six, eight, right? So I have eight electrons around my phosphorus, right? And it's, it, it's octet, you would think right now, is satisfied, okay, uh, okay, right? So you may think that way, but remember, we still have 32 electrons to play, so we've only used only eight, right? So we still have a lot more to go. Now, the idea is that is we want to be able to, to put together the structure where we only use 32 electrons, right? All the octets are satisfied, right? Now, remember that we have three hydrogens, so I could actually go ahead and form a single bond, right, from the oxygen to give the only bond that hydrogen could form, right? So that's the, that's the, that's the point that, that I mentioned earlier, that you want to be able to have the hydrogen to be branched, right, as an intuitive thing because it only could form one bond. Now, at this point, my oxygen has two, four, only four valence electrons around it. So my oxygen cannot occupy any more uh, electrons or any more bonds, right? And my phosphorus at this point, we could say is good, right? So the only other option we have is to put this in the form of lone pairs around my oxygen, right? I have two more hydrogens to place, and you could imagine I could essentially do the same thing. Right? I can essentially do the same thing. I have two, four, six, eight. So this oxygen is satisfied. This oxygen is satisfied. And is 
And as you could acknowledge, I have one more hydrogen to place and I could essentially do the same thing, right? So now, two, four, six, eight. So this oxygen is satisfied and obviously my hydrogens are good because they could only form one bond. So therefore the maximum amount of electrons that could be around the oxygen or around the hydrogen should be two, right? Now let's count up how many total electrons we've used thus far. We've used two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26 right so we've used only we've used 26 electrons thus far so that means that we're deficient in another six electrons right so how do we put right we can't put any more electrons essentially around these three branches right because they're essentially full right but what we can actually do I could take use of this and you may want to try it as well is actually I could form a double bond to this phosphorus because remember phosphorus is one of those atoms that you shouldn't be surprised by now can have an expanded octet right so this takes care of uh two out of the six electrons that we had to place right so you would think that this uh, this phosphorus is satisfied and, and and that's probably true right but we only have four electrons around my oxygen right so i have two four electrons around my oxygen so the only other way i could actually um, satisfy the oxygen octet rule is to actually put these in a the form of lone pair. So now I have two, four, two, four, six, eight electrons, right? So all my octet is satisfied. And let's count out how many total electrons we've used thus far. This is two, four, six, eight, right? Now look, all these branches are the same, right? All these branches are the same. So essentially, I'm doing one, two, three. So I'm doing three times eight, which would be uh, three times eight which would be 24 electrons right from 24 we have 26 28 30 32 which is exactly what we counted so we know that this should be a plausible lower structure for the acid now you might you might and real quick before you go you might wonder okay well we learned about the octet rule and the phosphorus has an expanded octet well, here's the reason why. If you look at phosphorus, we said that it has five valence electrons. So essentially, I have one, two, three, four, five. So essentially, each of these could actually form a bond, right? And so that's why we said phosphorus, right? And so that's why we say phosphorus. Uh, and so that's why we say phosphorus can have an expanded octet based off or valence electrons.